So, uh, Tatiana, you've been working very closely with uh, Professor Mohamed Yunus and you've been working on implementation of social business model, as Professor Mohamed Yunus calls it. So, uh, social business model, social entrepreneurship in India has been popular for, for decades, but in Europe it's a new concept and you've been working very closely to implement that, not only here in India, but in Europe and globally. So, what do you think, what are the main challenges implementing social business models in, in, within European Union? Yeah, thanks a lot, thank you for having me here. Maybe to start with, we talked about the political level, about the business level, but I also feel that I'm speaking now to you as an individual who herself bridged um, all this way between Europe and India for many times. It's my fifth time here in India for long, and luckily during my studies, during the, in the last five years of my life, I had the chance to be here and to actually learn here, most often funded by EU programs, uh, German government program. And I really want to stress that uh, I really felt the reason why I'm here is because I want to learn. I want to learn about social initiatives and about development. And I want to stress that this is maybe a different perspective than other people have. Because um, somehow what I don't like is that most often we have this north-south perspective saying, okay, we can teach you something, etc. Um, and this brings me to the work of Dr. Yunus. I mean, Bangladesh is one of the poorest countries in the world. And still, what I've developed in Bangladesh for the last 40 years is very impressive. I mean, I guess most of you know the, the example of Grameen Bank. The Professor Yunus went to the US, he studied there, he came back and he wanted to teach economics in Chittagong in the south of Bangladesh. But there was a big famine happening, so whatever, uh, whatever he taught at the university, he somehow thought, hey, this is not true, this is not working. So he came up with this little trigger of giving out little loans to uh, the rural population and what developed now is the Grameen Bank who has been replicated in 141 countries all over the world including New York City, including the um, uh, United States of America. So here we can see what we can actually uh, maybe in countries of the global north, uh, north can learn from, from countries like Bangladesh, from countries like India. And uh, the social business movement right now, um, following Professor Yunus, is very exciting. It has been a little movement still, of around 10, 20,000 people only. But we can see that the programs are um, establishing themselves all over the world. We have 50 big social businesses in Bangladesh and in Europe. We can also see this hub um, of business models. What I've learned is that in whichever context we are, there's this core idea of social business, according to Professor Yunus, he established seven principles that should be followed if someone wants to be part of that network. But still, each context needs to be very much adapted, very much localized, and there's this different solution for each and every country, so we can barely generalize. Um, whereas maybe in Bangladesh, it was often used as a tool to development in order to maybe collaborating with also with the government or with um, intergovernment organizations. And what we've seen in Europe is that also corporate the corporate sector is engaging into the social business model. So we have joint ventures between Grameen and uh, Danone, for example, Veolia. They've set up their own social business company that are as part maybe of their CSR activity in order to create something more sustainable. Um, challenges? You were asking, well, I think, as I said, you need to have a totally different approach if you're in a welfare state like Germany. Um, there are many, it, it has been a, like, a system which has been established for the last 130 years, I would say, starting from Bismarck. So we have these established institutions that take care of social problems. So sometimes innovation, creativity cannot be easily triggered. I feel in Germany, we, for example, lack like, this creativity and like this innovation. <laughs> that's why, uh, yeah, we should, that's why, for example, as I said, we can learn a lot from, from that. Julian Fronta, you as a German national trying to build an incubator accelerator here in India and bringing uh, European, German intellect to actually advise and mentor Indian-based startups. So maybe you can elaborate a little. So why and what are the challenges for you as a European national actually building something here in the subcontinent? Yeah, I'd, um, I'd like to give you a bit of background about how D-Labs came about and about the team. So we're basically a startup for startups, uh, which means we're still ourselves a young team. And when I say young, it's not only the age of the people engaged, but uh, we only incorporated the company uh, five months ago. 
Um, what we are aiming for is to bring global knowledge to India. Um, some of my co-founders actually participated in various programs which are quite established in uh, the European Union. Uh, I'd like to mention two of them because they're quite famous across the Union. Um, one is a uh, the Design Thinking School, which is um, funded and supported by Hassel Plattner, uh, the Hassel Plattner Institute in Potsdam. Um, they are focusing on design thinking as one method for ideation. And the other bit comes from the Climate Kick, which is a European wide initiative on clean tech, uh, urban transformation, smart city initiatives, etc., and works very closely with, with academia um, around Europe. So um, some of my co-founders with Indian Roots have had the chance to participate in those programs and were inspired to bring something similar to India and help aspiring entrepreneurs, students to uh, participate in similar programs. What we've been doing recently is putting an event together where we um, give young entrepreneurs the chance to get a taste for those kind of things. So we brought in like 30 um, experts from the European Union and other parts of the world to Hyderabad and gathered them in one place and gave 200 startups the opportunity to learn from them, listen to their experiences, etc. Uh, you've been uh, speaking about the startup network and a lot of things about you know, uh, India. We have investors from America and maybe like let's say from China and all. Uh, see, I mean, I, I, I work with startups and a lot of us uh, are from the social entrepreneurship background. So when, you, when we speak from that angle, you know, I mean, like, if I have a startup, uh, it's not that like I'm uh, without an inflection or without a reference property, we're reaching out to investors to become quite difficult. Now we're talking about crossing borders and going to Europe, European Union, and then, look for, you know, attract the venture capitalists and then maybe like uh, take the investment opportunities. So from that angle, uh, you know, what, what, how do you think is the environment ready uh, for Indian startups to approach uh, uh, these investors from European Union and uh, you know, be a vegan wants to add if you uh, have. So in, in this case, like, uh, how uh, attractive is it, you know? And uh, does uh, your network or like uh, all the uh, existing frameworks that maybe probably Indian uh, startups can actually make use of in reaching out to European investors and then fueling their growth, you know, scaling uh, and you know, investment go hand in hand. You know, in that case, uh, what's your point on that? We're not hearing you. I'm sorry. Do you hear me all right now? Yeah. Hello? Yes. Yeah. So, um, so what we focus on is exactly that, in order to be able to connect the investors with the right startups, right? And uh, so the, one of the ways to efficiently do so is just to reach out to Startup Europe India Network. And we look into our investor base who are interested in uh, both the European and also the Indian markets. So what we are trying to do is not just gather the European investors for the Indian market and gather the invest Indian investors for the European market, but rather gather the global investors for both the European and the Indian markets. So for example, we have Spark Global Ventures, which is a US-based VC firm who is part of the network, and they're looking into both the Indian markets, but also the European market, and they are one of the part of the syndicate for us. So uh, I think the efficient, what we are trying to do is exactly to address the problem because uh, one of the biggest time uh, that's allocated for a startup founder or the top management is fundraising. You need to be fundraising all the time if you're a startup. So that's where we think that there could be efficient ways to be created using both technology and also I mean, coming from the venture world. Uh, it's very much still a, it's, it's a cottage industry. It's about people referring the startups to the right investors and then gathering the trust from there and then working with them before the investment happens. So we're looking at ways right now, how can we effectively use a distributed intelligence? What we mean as, uh, with the distributed intelligence is that we are gathering supporters, we are gathering ambassadors across these key European hubs and Indian hubs in order to be able to uh, work closely with the local startups so that we can understand the startups from their perspective. And then how can we just translate this knowledge much more efficiently to the investors so that they could gain trust on the startup and then we can speed up the whole 
uh, fundraising process for the startups. So that's where we invite the startups. When you say startups, it's not only the just startup companies, but also the growth companies that can be anywhere from C to Series A to uh, Series C and D and beyond is the kind of companies that we were working with. And how can we efficiently do that by connecting with the global investors who are focused on European and Indian markets. And we would like to be the one stop point where they can get in touch with us. And if we think that this startup is of uh, quality that we can basically transfer to our investor base, and we will do so, so that efficient fundraising process happens. There are over 200 incubators coming in India. Half of them are funded by the government. There are not enough, you know, the facilitators like you guys who can actually help startups. Any efforts being made by you to create those facilitators in India? Um, yeah, like this is exactly where we try to fill the gap. Um, in bringing in uh, experts, knowledgeable people from, from Europe who have been in startup ecosystems around the world. So who have been witnessing the development of a startup ecosystem from the first entrepreneurs being there until you have an um, affluent kind of community which attracts people from all over the world. It's actually a point I wanted to make earlier. I'm coming from Berlin and how the city has changed over the past six to ten years in terms of the international spirit is just amazing. Like now, like it's, it's, an, it's a city which even attracts American people to come in, which was never the case for any Europe, like for any German city before. And this is actually a thought I had um, over the last two weeks coming from our own conference and then coming here as well that I think this is something India should be aiming for, to bring in more international entrepreneurs, to get a certain exchange going, to get in new ideas, to, to get, yeah, really like work together. And the, the, the power of interdisciplinary teams and also international teams is just, just amazing and un, unparalleled, I would say. To add to that reality check, I think reality check is very important. So um, we were we were seeing a lot of pitches uh, last week, and um, there are things that simply don't work. Okay, they don't work in Europe. They don't work here. They don't work anywhere, uh, or they have been done three hundred times, um, <laughs> and there's no need of having a three hundred and one <laughs> company doing the same, right? Um, and that's that's how I think. Um, we coming from, from Europe or from more developed markets uh, can, can help. Um, but for that, I think like uh, you guys uh, are doing a, a pretty good job and have to do that even more um, because bringing people that have already uh, done, uh, they've done, they, 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 they saw it, they experienced it, they can bring the knowledge and that saves us, that saves them time. I was, uh, something that I pointed out before, um, which is, the entrepreneurs have to know um, what's their business model, how they're going to market, etc. Uh, and then they go to funding. The other thing that is very important is time. Okay, It's really um, speed of execution. And uh, you're doing something today, but someone else maybe uh, started something similar yesterday. Uh, so that's something that's uh, a really, really valid learning for, for Indian entrepreneurs too. Uh, just to, to add one more thing, because you can easily switch to something and to all those things which don't work, right? But on the other side, what I witnessed is, is an amazing aspiration. I think the youngest entrepreneur on the floor was 18 years, and he has been hunting every single investor, mentor down the floor. It was just incredible. And I, I'd love to see that. It's something you hardly see in Europe. Like, people were so keen to learn from those people. Like... I'm, I'm still super impressed by that.